smoking Jenga up here. Thank you. The British have King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. The Irish have Fiona McCall and Athena. The Greeks had Jason and the Argonauts. And the Ossetians, an ancient people of Iranian origins who live in the Caucasian mountains, they have the North heroes. North is their word for hero, and it refers to a collection of men, of famous men, strong and brave, and all of them with their each individual talents who banded together on raids and hunts and adventures, and there are hundreds of tales about them. I only brought you one of them. That's a good one. The story goes that one day, the heroes of the Norths decided to go out on a hunt. And they all settled up, and they took their lances and their bows and arrows, and they rode out into the mountains and into the valleys. And the valleys were echoing from the sound from their hunting horns. And they shot deer, and they cooked the meat over the fire, and they feasted on it. And they traveled even further over the mountains and across the valleys looking for better more rare prey. And as they wandered over the, the mountains and the valleys, it got late in the day. And they decided that they were going to stop and camp somewhere. And because there were dark clouds rolling in on the, in the sky, they could tell it was going to rain. So they looked around looking for a shelter from the rain to spend the night. And as they looked around, Sosna, one of the greatest heroes of the Narts, said, oh look, there is a cave right over there. Let's take shelter there from the night. And if there are bears in the cave, they'll just kill them. But there were no bears in the cave. But the North heroes all fit into the cave. They walked in through the dark arch that led into the depths of the, of the earth. And they walked in, and they set up a little campfire. And they all sat around, and they told stories, and they drank, and they were married. In the morning, the clouds were gone, and the sun came up, and the North heroes settled up, and they rode out of the cave through the dark arch. And when they were out of the cave, and in this valley that they had never seen before, they looked around, and they said, well, this is strange. And they turned around to look back at the cave, and now, in the light of day, now they could tell that it was not a cave at all. It was a giant skull, half sunk into the ground, and what they thought was this dark arch, the entrance of the cave, was really one of the eye holes of the skull. And it was so large that it would fit all the heroes of the Narts inside. And they said, well, that's interesting. So they started digging. They started cleaning up the skull. They took out their, their swords, and they took out their, their lances, and they started digging up the skull and clearing away the dust and the earth, and they accidentally invented archaeology at this point. And they found not just the giant skull, but they also found other giant bones, and they were lying everywhere, and even, they, even though they were, they were way too big for any human being that they've ever seen, they were definitely human shaped. So they looked at each other, and they looked at Sosman as their leader, and Sosman said, well, Maybe we spent the night inside his head. Might as well find out who this person was. So he did something that archaeologists had never done before, which is he laid out all the bones with the help of the other heroes. They dragged all the bones into place until they had the entire skeleton of a giant man laid out on the ground from the skull tilt to the feet. And then Sassan stood at the head of the giant and he prayed. And the North heroes had this very special gift. Whenever they prayed for something, it always came true. So Sosman prayed, please God of gods, my God, please allow this man to come back to life and tell us his story. But please make him mine so he can't hurt us. <laughs> he prayed. And as he prayed, the earth started to tremble. And the bones started to shake. And they reconnected with each other with loud th thunderous cracks. And the, as the bones reconnected, muscles started growing over them, out of the ground. And then over the muscles, skin started to crawl back on the body of the giant. And then suddenly, the giant took a deep, <gasps> shuddering breath. And he sat up. And he was alive, but he had no eyes. And he spoke in this thunderous voice, and he said, who goes there? 
And Sussman talked to him and he said, it's us. We are the sons of the Narts. We are the heroes of the sun. Uh, we, are, we were adventuring. We were on a hunt in these mountains and we found you. But we don't know, uh, we've never seen a man like you before. Can you tell us who you are? And the giant turned his head and tilted his ear towards the sound, but you could tell that he was straining to hear that tiny voice down there somewhere. And he said, oh, I've heard about the nerds. There were stories in my life that there was going to be a race of heroes coming after my people had disappeared, and they were going to be called the nerds. So let me fill you. I, I've always dreamed of meeting the hero, meeting these heroes, but I died at the half, oh, half the, the halfway point of my life. I was only 500 years old. I died really young in a hunting accident, and I always wish to meet these legendary heroes. Please let me, let me at least touch you, since I can't see you. So Sussman woke up, and he put his hand into the hand of the giant, and it almost completely disappeared in the giant's palm. And the giant really carefully closed his hand around Sosman's arm and he said, Well, you're tiny. What do you eat? And Sosman said, Well, we eat the, the meat of the, the, the animals that we hunt. And uh, we also eat some fruits and vegetables and uh, we drink wine. And the giant said, That sounds awful. And so I said, why, what did your people eat? What, what kept you growing so large? And the giant said, we ate the juices of the earth and we drank the milk of the stones. And so I said, what? I will show you, said the giant. And he reached down and he scooped up a handful of earth and he said, hold out your cup. So Sosman took the cup from his belt and he held it out and the giant squeezed that handful of earth and he squeezed it so hard that the life essence of the soil, that sweet smelling juices of the life, the earth that give life to everything that thrives, dripped out from between his fingers and dripped into the cup. And Sosman tasted it and it was delicious. And the giant said, now you will not have to eat for another week. This will keep you fed for a really long time. And then he reached up again and he picked up a boulder that was lying nearby and he crushed it between his fingers so hard that milk started to drip out of the stone. And Sosman tasted that too and it tasted delicious. And he said, well, I never knew that there were people living here before us. Can you please tell us a little more about yourself? Can you tell us what kind of a game you used to play? And the giant said, of course I can tell you. We love throwing rocks. And so Sven said, well, can you show me? And the giant said, yes, the way this game works, I will throw a rock and you will catch it, and you will throw it back. <laughs> and so Sven said, all right. So he backed away to the other side of the valley, and he yelled, I'm ready! So the giant reached down and picked up this giant boulder, bigger than Sosman and his horse together, and he launched it across the valley to what Sosna was not stupid, so he jumped out of the way before the boulder ever landed, and the boulder crashed into the mountain sign right next to him. And he said, that's impressive. And the giant, he said, you're still alive. I thought that boulder would crush you. And Sosna left, and he rode his horse back to the giant. And he said, well, I hate to tell you, but even though you had stories about us as heroes and brave warriors, I don't think I can play your game. And the giant sighed, and he said, well, I tried to best you. I thought that maybe if I defeated you, I could come back and live the life that I left behind again. And they were quiet for a while. And then the giant slowly lay back down like a tree, an ancient, centuries old tree falling to the ground. And as he lay down on the ground, the skin and the muscle and the sinew slowly disappeared. And all that was left was a giant skeleton, a set of old dry bones lying in the valley. And the Norts settled their horses and they turned around and they rode back home and they carried the story of the giant with them.